In this problem, we are to provide a detailed sketch of the quadratic function given here. We are also to identify the characteristics of the graph of the function, like the vertical intercept, the vertex, the axis of symmetry, and the horizontal intercepts. In addition to this, we are to give the domain and the range of the function. The first thing I want to do is identify the values of a, b, and c for my function. So notice for my function, a is negative 4, and the b value, the coefficient on x, is 72. And since there is no constant in my equation, you could think of c as being 0, so I'm just going to delete it. Now to find the vertical intercept of the graph of my equation, I know that a vertical intercept would be where it crosses the y-axis, in which case the input, or the x value in this case, would be 0. So replacing 0 in for x, you would notice that all of my terms become 0. 0 squared is 0, and 0 times negative 4 is 0, and 0 times 72 is 0. In general, the vertical intercept of any quadratic function is the value of c, and for my case, that was 0. So when c is 0, we have a special case that our vertical intercept is the same as our horizontal intercept, because notice if you were to plot 0 comma 0 on the graph, that point is where the graph is going to cross both the horizontal axis as well as the vertical. So I have one more horizontal intercept to find. Before I do so, I'm first going to find the vertex. The formula for the x value of the vertex of a parabola is negative b over 2a. Once you get the x value of the vertex, you can find the y value like you would any other point on a graph by simply replacing the x value you find here into the x values of the equation. The notation that says to plug negative b over 2a into the function would be g of negative b over 2a. And in general, you'd see the letter f here, but since my function has the name g, I'm going to use g here. So for my function, the x value of the vertex would be negative 72, and this is because b is 72. The opposite of b would be negative 72. Then we are to divide by 2 times a, and a was negative 4 in our case. So this simplifies out to be negative 72 divided by negative 8. The negatives simplify out, and 8 goes into 72 9 times. So I get that the x value of the vertex is 9. Now we need to plug the 9 into the function g to get out the y value, so that would be g of 9. If you want to use the calculator in this part, that's fine. In fact, you could have done the negative 72 divided by parentheses 2 times a, and again, a is negative 4 in my example. And notice that I put the 2 and the negative 4 in parentheses to let the calculator know that both of those numbers are to be in the denominator of my fraction. Pressing enter, I do indeed get that x is 9 again. Now I want to plug 9 into the equation, so I'll replace this x value and this x value with 9. Make sure to use the negative key instead of the subtract key in front of the 4. Where I see the letter x, again I'm replacing it with 9. Pressing enter, I will get the y value of the vertex to be 324. So 9 comma 324 is my vertex. So now that I have that, let's move that up here. I also want to point out, since I know that the a value of my quadratic is negative, it means that the parabola is going to be an upside down u shape, which means it's going to have a high point, and that high point would have coordinates 9 comma 324. So suppose this was x equals 9 right here and I'll arbitrarily make this y value 324. The maximum of my parabola would be right here. And I'm expecting the parabola to go left and hit this point here. And of course, by symmetry, that curvature would also apply to the right. Seeing that most of the interesting behavior of the graph is appearing up and to the right, I'm going to move my axes over to give myself more room to draw. So I literally just moved everything over. I'm going to replot that point 9, 324 and draw a rough sketch of my graph. And unfortunately, this is about the best I can do by drawing by hand. But the whole intent of the problem is to draw a sketch, not an accurate graph. And I feel the need to move this tick mark over so that when I draw the axis of symmetry, which is a vertical line, through the point 9, 324, it'll actually hit the tick mark on the x-axis, mark 9. So here I'm just drawing a vertical line through x equals 9, which notice passes through the vertex of the parabola and also passes through the tick mark I have at x equals 9. I drew the line in green 
and the axes in blue to indicate that it's only the red curve that actually contains points that satisfy the given equation for g of x. The screen line is called the axis of symmetry because the curvature to the left of that line is supposed to be a mirror image to the curvature to the right. Because I'm drawing it by hand, this isn't very clear, but you should see this on the calculator in a moment. For now, I'm just going to record that the axis of symmetry is the line x equals 9. The equation of a vertical line is always x equals the number that it passes through on the x-axis. Because x equals 9 looks just like an x value, I preface my answer with the words the line to remind us that this actually is the equation of a vertical line. Now this is a special case because one of my horizontal intercepts is x equals 0. Since the first horizontal intercept is 9 units to the left of my axis of symmetry, I know that my rightmost horizontal intercept will also be 9 units from the axis of symmetry, and since 9 plus 9 is 18, I know without the help of a graphing calculator that the second horizontal intercept here would have an x value of 18, and of course the y value would be 0. So I will record that over here in my list of horizontal intercepts. Since I didn't need to use the intersect feature on my calculator to find the horizontal intercepts for this example, I'll take the time to show you how you use the graphing calculator to find the vertex of the parabola. So let me go to y equals, I'll type my equation in, make sure to use the negative key instead of the minus key here. So negative 4x squared plus 72x. I always like to point out, if you were to press zoom and then number 6 in a standard window, I like to point out why it is you see what you see in the graphing calculator. It's actually hard to see, but there's a little bit of a line right here to the left of the y-axis and a little bit here. Let me explain what's happening. So because my window is from negative 10 to 10 on the x-axis and negative 10 to 10 on the y-axis, but remember 10 is extremely small relative to 324. In fact, this isn't even small enough, but I have to give myself some room to draw a box here. Just to give you an idea what you were seeing on your calculator screen, you were only seeing the part of the graph within this gray box that I just drew. But it turns out that the graph is actually so steep that the graph looks like the y-axis in the calculator window, and that's why we're seeing this here. So let me press Window, and I'm going to go down to my x-max, and because my rightmost horizontal intercept is 18, I'm going to put my x-max at around 25. I always go a bit bigger. My y-max needs to be at least as high as 324. I think I'll pick 400. The higher you go, the more white space you'll have at the top of your calculator. If you type in 324, the parabola will actually reach the very top of your calculator, but your calculator uses that space sometimes to write things. Now, if I leave the settings the way they are now, my y-min of negative 10 will essentially be so small it might as well be 0 relative to how big my y max of 400 is, which means you'll barely see the x-axis at all. So although that works, I would rather have that at, say, negative 100 to leave a little room at the bottom of the screen when I graph it. In fact, let me hit graph and show you what I mean. So notice, because I put my y min at negative 100, I have the space right in here, below the x-axis, and if you were to hit trace and move around the screen, notice that the cover needs that room to write things. It also needs room at the top of the calculator to write things, and that's why I didn't use 324 as a max, I went to 400. Now, I was saying I was going to show you how to use the calculator to find the vertex. You could just hit trace and get an estimate of the vertex. It's somewhere around x equals 9, and the y value is somewhere around 324. In fact, that's surprisingly accurate given that I'm just tracing, and I urge you never to do that since your calculator has a feature that gives you much more accuracy. So I'm going to press second trace, which accesses the calc menu. Now in a previous video I showed you how to use the intersect feature number 5 to find the horizontal intercepts, but since that was relatively easy in this problem, I'm going to use the calculator to find the maximum value or the vertex in this problem. Since it is the highest y value on the graph, it would be a maximum y value, so I'm going to select number 4. So either scroll down and press enter on number 4, or you can press number 4 on the keypad. Either way, it gets you to the max feature. Now, what the calculator is going to want is a left bound and right bound. In some mathematics classes, we actually ask, what's the maximum value between this point and that point, which has nothing to do with the highest point on the graph. So the calculator wants you to pick two points to define a region for which you want it to search for to find the point that has the biggest y value. For me, I'm trying to find this point right here. 
So I will pick a left bound, which is to the left, and in this case down as well, and that would be my left bound. It will also want me to pick a point to the right of the vertex, which in my case would also be down, and I'll call that a right bound. What you're telling the calculator is to search in this region here for the point that has the biggest y value. So when it says left bound, I need to ignore the y value, and I just need to move to the left so that my left bound is to the left of x equals 9. Or if you didn't know what the vertex was, just make sure that the point you're picking is lower than the max and to the left. So I'll press enter to select that as a left bound. Then I'll move to the right of x equals 9, say around x equals 10 or so. And as long as your point is to the right and below the maximum, that would be a good right bound. And now I've told the calculator to look between these two arrows for an x value that produces the biggest y value in that region. So I'm going to press enter. If you want, you can guess where the answer is by moving back to the left, but that's not necessary. I'm just going to press enter for the guess, let it think about it. There is a little bit of round off here. This is why I like the formula negative b over 2a, because when you use that formula, you don't get any round off error. The real answer is x equals 9 and y equals 324. So now what's left in this video is the domain and the range. The domain of all quadratics is negative infinity to infinity, because as long as you're plugging in a real number into x, you'll always get a real number out. In particular with equations, the only time you get a domain other than this is only if you're ever dividing by zero or taking the square root of a negative. Since I have no variables in any denominators, you're never going to be dividing by zero. And since there's no square roots in my equation, there's no chance of ever taking the square root of a negative. So in short, nothing ever goes wrong with these equations. No matter what you plug in, you'll always be able to square the number, multiply by negative four, you'll always be able to multiply by 72, and you'll always get a real result. So everything works from negative infinity to infinity. So negative infinity you can think of as x values to the left forever, and positive infinity you can think of as x values to the right forever. So you're basically saying that any x value in the world, infinitely far to the left and to the right, are part of the domain. Notice I'm going to put parentheses around both negative infinity and positive infinity because you do not want to include those values because in fact they're not values at all. Infinity is not considered a real number. Now the range of the graph depends on whether your parabola opened up or down. Since my graph opened down, there's no limit to how low the graph goes. The y values will decrease without bound and go in a negative direction. So for example, here's a y value of negative 100, here's a y value of negative 200, here's a y value of negative 300, and the y values just keep getting lower and lower forever, and going down forever in terms of y values, this is where the y values are negative, so they just get further and further in the negative direction forever. So the lowest that the graph goes would be no limit, negative infinity, and as usual put a parenthesis there not to include the negative infinity. The highest the graph goes would be right here. We already established that the y value, the vertex, is 324, so that's the biggest y value you'll ever get. And we saw this on the calculator as well, that the maximum value for y was 324. But you actually do get that y value when you plug in x equals 9. We did it right here. We replaced x with 9 in the equation and got that the y value is 324, so we include that value. So hopefully this all makes sense, and as always, I wish you the best of luck.